Hello! Welcome to my video. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I'm gonna try and make this video a short one because I have some thoughts about the situation since I've become aware of it, and as much as I want to have some really hard-hitting or thought-provoking commentary on this, I feel like these are just some opinions that I have that are being overlooked and I wanted to garner more attention to it because I don't know. Um, some things about this whole debacle feels weirdly unfair in ways, and I want to talk about it. So, here we are. Hi guys, gals, gays, and enves. I'm Omnia and it's been... It's been a very long time. I want to apologize in advance for not uploading, for being off the map, for just disappearing and pretending I don't exist in general. I'm back, I'm alive, and most importantly, I exist, so that's good. Today we're going to be talking about Hello Leash, her apology video, my opinions about all that, and some reactions I've seen within the commentary community that are generally just not my cup of tea. Let's jump into it. If you aren't already aware of her, Hello Leash is a 35-year-old YouTuber who is most known for her videos about Gabby Hanna and her less than ideal experiences with her. She has also been known to make some videos about Creepshow Art and her relationship with Gabby Hanna. Before this situation, Hello Leash was approaching 49,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel, but her stats have been dropping ever since. She currently stands at around 47,100 subscribers and has lost about 1,500 subscribers in total as a result of this controversy. So, what is is this controversy you may be asking. Well, you see, she was recently exposed for saying the n-word and f-word on a karaoke app called Samuel about five years ago. And like, that sentence alone is probably enough for you to tell what direction this video is going. <laughs> so, about five years ago, Hello Leash was exposed for singing Lil Wayne's verse, which featured two particular slurs, the n-word and the f-slur, on Chris Brown's song Look At Me Now on this karaoke app. Keep in mind, of course, that Hello Leash was 30 at the time, so like, the excuse of it being, I was just a teenager and I was immature and ignorant and didn't know any better, doesn't cut it in this situation. Of course, she has since deleted the recording off of the Samuel app, but people still managed to screen record it and keep a digital copy of it, which has since been circulated on social media to garner attention about the controversy. Here's the clip with the slurs censored out. Time to shuck and drive these as pumpkin pie, so I can spite on a private flight. Bitch, I've been tight since died in night. And my pocket's white, and my diamond's white, and my mama's nice, my daddy's dead. You care, cause I'm too wild, been here for a while. I was like, fuck up, I put it down, I'm so young, and if you got eyes, look at me now, bitch, look at me now. Now, obviously that's one issue and the catalyst for a lot of subsequent issues that arise throughout this entire thing. I, I don't even know what to call this because while yes, Hello Leash was literally 30 whole years old at the time and still decided to say it, a lot of people were debating about how morally reprehensible this actually was. Some people thought it was fine because it's just karaoke, she's just singing the lyrics and isn't actually trying to actively hurt the demographics that are most affected by said slurs. By the same token, some people were arguing that no matter the context, saying these slurs with the intention to harm or not is not okay, especially if you're not a member of the demographic that these slurs pertain to. Meaning, because Hello Leash is not black nor queer, she can't use those slurs regardless of whether it was in a song, intentionally harmful, or just something casual she says on a Tuesday afternoon. Despite these debates, Hello Leash went on to post an apology video about these exposed recordings recordings titled, I'm sorry, please see pinned comment, and this is the part of the video where I feel it appropriate to insert my own two cents about this because I'm biracial black and queer so I feel like I have some horse in this race, but I just want to play her apology and highlight specific areas where I think she goes wrong because I can understand why some aspects of this video rub some people the wrong way. Let's let it roll. Hey guys. Um I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I want to let you know, I wanted to hop on and let you know that there's not going to be a BAP today, just because I do think it's important that I address this issue, and I don't want that overshadowed in any way today. Um, nor do I think, honestly, that I'd be able to focus on anything else today. Um, but if you don't know, um, there are some recordings online from a karaoke app that I used years ago in which I rapped along to a Lil Wayne lyric that not only contained the N-word, but also the F-slur. 
and I'd mostly forgotten that these recordings existed. And I'm just embarrassed and I'm sorry that I ever used those words. They, they're words that I was raised not to use. Pausing right here for you to keep a mental note. She said she was raised not to use these slurs. Just remember that. Let's continue. Because they're, they're nasty. They're hurtful. They have deep-seated histories of being nasty and hurtful. And I don't need to explain that to you. You know that. But I just want you to know that I am aware of that. And I always have been aware of that, which is why I never should have sung those lyrics in the first place. Pausing again for you to keep another mental note. She stated she is aware of how hurtful these slurs are and was always aware of how hurtful they were. And if that were true, and if she truly was raised not to use them, it's like, how did we get to this situation in the first place? If you were raised to know better, you were always aware of the fact that you shouldn't have used them, it makes it really hard to believe that you said them without intent to harm or that you were the one who even said them at all. It's either you really were aware of what you were doing and did it anyways because it seemed inconsequential at the time, or you weren't aware at all and did it because you didn't know better. I don't know which one is the truth because as you will soon see, this whole apology gives a lot of mixed signs, but regardless, let's continue. Because it's in a song doesn't take away the impact of those words, and I just feel so stupid that I was ignorant to that fact at the time. How? How? You were raised not to use those words. You were always aware of the fact that you should not use those words. Yet you were ignorant to the fact at the time, I just don't understand how that works. I'm so confused. How, how is this possible? What is the truth? That I made these recordings. So I just want you guys to know, and only time will tell, and it all depends on whether or not I prove myself to be a trustworthy person, but I don't use these words in my, they're not in my vernacular. They're not in my everyday or any day language. So I hope you can trust that this is not something you're going to see from me in present day or in the future. They're hurtful, they're nasty, and I'm sorry I ever, ever uttered them in any capacity. Thank you. So that was the apology in its entirety. Frankly, I just feel more confused than anything. All she really needed to say was that she was sorry about her usage of the slurs and kept it at that, clarified she doesn't use them regularly, and that it was a one-time thing that she did in a song. Honestly, listening back to the recording, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt and just chalk it up to her being like, I'm rapping to this Lil Wayne verse, and I want to hit all the lyrics, so I'm just going to say all the words, and it's going to sound like I'm sliding on the beat, and that's the sound I'm looking to achieve. And that really could have been that, and honestly, if that were the case, for me, that would have probably been enough. I feel like I would have just shrugged my shoulders and been like, mm, just another one of those situations where someone doesn't think about the impact of their actions and moved on. Yes, I think it's ridiculous that she was 30 years old and still didn't think that participating in that action would have been detrimental at all. Yes, I think she was old enough to know that would have been problematic for her down the line if she were to garner a big enough following. Yes, I agree that she shouldn't have ever said those words and I don't care if it's in a song or not, if you're not black and if you're not queer, you shouldn't use those slurs. But at the end of the day, do I genuinely think she needs to be deplatformed or whatever because she did those things? Not really. I just think it should raise an eyebrow or two. And of course, if that's something that is unforgivable to you, unsubscribe and move on. Find a YouTuber who is more squeaky clean than she is and would never think to say something like that. Everybody has thresholds, everyone has triggers, and some people will take greater offense to certain actions than others, and that's okay. Sometimes something you don't see as a big deal will hurt someone more depending on their history and experiences with said thing. And that should be respected. 
but speaking for me, I just think it was a dumb thing she did, and if it is discovered down the line that she has done more of that, then I'll reevaluate my stance, but for now, it's just, it's an unfortunate thing. Besides the mixed signal she was sending in her apology, there was one other thing that rubbed me the wrong way, and that was the fact that the apology felt like a performance. And I will elaborate more on what I mean by that in a second, but I feel like this comment really drives home what I feel about that. Aerie stated, quote, I'm not black, but I am gay slash trans. I'd like to echo the comment Tsunami left that the apology serves the purpose of acknowledging and apologizing, but the theatrics aren't necessary or appreciated. People affected by these dehumanizing and degrading words do not want to see you cry in shame or embarrassment for having participated in our degradation. It would go a lot further if you respected us enough to wait to film an apology until your emotions are in check and just calmly, sincerely apologize. I'm not saying you won't have an emotional reaction or that you shouldn't, just that you shouldn't film those emotions for an apology video. Another commenter stated, quote, I truly am sick of these emotional YouTube apology videos. It's clear from the editing you are trying to elicit a very particular response instead of just straight up being open and apologizing. It's not like you were a kid who didn't know any better. You were already in your 30s. It might be time to rein in the high and mighty act of calling out everyone else for their wrongdoings. And like... Yes, I agree with a couple of things said here. However, here's the thing with YouTuber apologies. There are a couple of fundamentals that are imperative for a YouTuber to know before they press record, edit, and upload their sorries. One, you must know and be very comfortable with the fact that no matter what decision you make in terms of trying to remedy a situation, it will always be taken the worst way possible. Two, the audience is highly critical of everything and will nitpick you to no end, commenters and other YouTubers alike. 3. People are very keen to pick up on inconsistencies and they are not dumb. Especially when you've already been exposed for something, they tend to be able to see through the bullshit real quick. What I mean when I say all that is, if you've ever observed what happens after a YouTuber gets exposed for doing something less than ideal, the apology is what makes or breaks their reception after the fact. For example, Laura Lee, whose apology is probably the best I've ever seen on this hell site, is a prime example. The dramatics, the theatrics, the moaning, the crocodile tears, the tissues that remain dry, and all the effort she puts into conjuring up any singular emotion is probably what makes her apology rank as high as it is in terms of YouTuber apologies. History has shown that audiences don't really like that. It comes off performative and disingenuous. And let's even go so far as to say that you edited your apology, including all the moments where you genuinely got choked up and felt deeply regretful for what you did. People are most likely not going to read it that way. It's funny for you to assume that someone will give you the benefit of the doubt or not see your actions as manipulative. Because the thing is, as soon as you load that video into an editing program and start to post-process it, decisions are being made and people see those jump cuts. They see where your hand intervened in what they see and hear. And that's when people become highly, highly critical, nitpicky, and unrelenting when it comes to your attempts to remedy a situation you messed up in. And you could argue that I and many other commentary channels participate in that action as unwanted as it may be. So, the way I see it, yes, I do personally feel like the way the apology was edited and spliced together was a bit performative. Did she need the long pauses, the long gulps of air, the contortions on her face, or moments where her voice shakes? No, not particularly, I, I really don't. But if I were to give her the benefit of the doubt, I could say those are genuine moments where she felt the weight of her actions most heavily and felt horrible. And that is just as valid as my feelings of performativity. But honestly, that's me being generous and taking the impartial route because let's be honest, is anyone ever really fair in their interpretations of apologies like this? No. <laughs> They hardly ever are. So while it may feel a bit manipulative to me, and that's me again being pessimistic and critical as fuck, it is also very equally possible that that is 
genuinely how she feels. Either way, it's likely going to make audiences feel like she included those segments to elicit a sympathetic or more gentle response from her viewers, and that doesn't tend to work in anyone's favor. Everyone has a different idea about what a good apology entails, but the problem is that even having a formula for that sort of thing is a bit manipulative and calculating in and of itself. All this to say, I guess Hello Leash was damned if she did, damned if she didn't, and people will continue to perceive her actions negatively or positively based on their own biases that they've already previously established. All that really matters is the fact that queer and black folks are the only ones who have any real standing as to whether or not they accept her apology, and if they do, then that's great. If they don't, they may have certain requests of her to make it right by them, and I guess that's one of the main points I want to stress. The only people who really can accept or deny her apology is the people who are most affected by it. Those were some of my thoughts about the whole thing. I was really just feeling frustrated with people who had no horse in this race saying that her apology was accepted or appreciated on behalf of black and queer folks. Not only that, but I was just generally confused by it all, and while I don't necessarily love her apology, who am I to be interpreting her intentions? I just think the whole situation is a big, huge, colossal mess in and of itself, and I'm glad she's going to take a break because after all this, I anticipate that she needs it. Until next time, that's all from me. Thank you, as always, to all of my wonderful patrons with a special thank you to these two special newcomers, Vabsaken or Dulu and Shortcake Emoji or Shortcake. All of your recent support has been so, so helpful in allowing me to drag myself out of my unrelenting burnout, so thank you so, so much again. If you would like to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Last but not least, a super, super special thank you goes out to R underscore Phantom heart on Twitter for this super pretty appreciation art. I treasure this so much, so thank you again, Phantom. It's the cutest. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye!